In other words, when you know who you are in God, you refuse to allow people to mistreat you. When you know who you are in God, you refuse to allow people to consistently and constantly take you for granted. When you know who you are in God, Hi friends, E.C. Malpe here, Senior Pastor of the True Holiness Saints Center in the beautiful city of Conway, Arkansas. And you know what time it is. It is Wednesday Word time. So what is our Wednesday Word for tonight? Our Wednesday Word is life. More specifically, I want to talk to you about living your best life. So what does it mean, Pastor Malpe, to live your best life? Living your best life simply means reaching your God-given potential. Living your best life means stepping outside of your comfort zone and being all that God wants you to be. In fact, Jesus talked about living your best life in John 10 and 10. In John 10 and 10, Jesus says these words. He says, the thief comes but to steal and to kill and to destroy. He says, but I have come that you might have life and have it to the full or have it more abundantly. Living your best life simply means living life to the full. And so here's what I want to do tonight. I want to give you three steps to living your best life. Three steps to living your best life. If you write in notes, write this down. Point number one, you've got to know your worth. That's right. Step number one is knowing your worth. Here's my question to you tonight. When it comes to knowing your worth, do you know what you bring to the table? Do you know your strengths and your weaknesses? Do you know your ability to influence? Do you know your uh, uh, unique skill set? What about your capacity? What do you mean, Pastor, won't be our capacity? How much can you handle? How much stress can you handle before you break? How much tension can you handle before you fall apart? Do you know your capacity? Knowing your self-worth not only means knowing your strengths and your weaknesses and your ability to influence and knowing your capacity, but it also means knowing what's unique about you, what's rare about you, what's uncommon about you. What do you bring to the table that nobody else brings? Living your best life means discovering what you bring to the table. Psalms 139 and 14, the psalmist said it like this. I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Your works, God, are wonderful and I know them full well. In other words, what the psalmist is saying, don't get it twisted. Our God doesn't make junk. And because God doesn't make junk, that means that you are the crescendo of God's creation. You've got to know your self-worth. You've got to know what you bring to the table. Social media quote for tonight. And I personally believe this is one of the most powerful social media quotes for 2021. I want to encourage you to write it in the comment section, to put it on all of your social media platforms, but here it is. When you're confident in what you bring to the table, you're never afraid to eat alone. Now just let that sink in. When you're confident in what you bring to the table, you're never afraid to eat alone. In other words, when you know who you are in God, you refuse to allow people to mistreat you. When you know who you are in God, you refuse to allow people to consistently and constantly take you for granted. When you know who you are in God, you don't accept just any behavior from anybody. When you're confident about what you bring to the table, your strengths, your uniqueness, your abilities, your skill set, when you know who you are in God, you don't settle from just anything for anyone or from anyone. When you know who you are 
and what you bring to the table. When you know your self-worth, you set reasonable boundaries in your life. You refuse, as I often say, to allow any person in your life to make you an option while you're making them a priority. When you know who you are, you refuse to be an option, an afterthought, can take you or leave you when you're doing all you can to make that person a priority in your life. When you know your self-worth, you set reasonable boundaries that say you can no longer mistreat me. Living your best life means knowing your worth, knowing that God has fearfully and wonderfully made you knowing that you are the crescendo of his creation. You've got to know your worth. But then secondly, if you want to live your best life, if you want to live it to the full, if you want to reach your full God-given potential, number two, you've got to follow God's timing. That's so important. Following God's timing or God's timetable. I love what it says in Psalms 31 and 15. Psalms 31 and 15, I'm just going to read the first part of the verse. But it says, my times are in your hands. Now that's good teaching. My times, my timetable is in the hands of the Lord. Always remember, living your best life means always being willing to submit to God's timetable even when you quite don't quite understand even when it seems like it's being delayed or slow you've got to be willing to trust God more than you trust yourself you've got to be willing to trust God more than you trust people but following God's timetable also means that you don't allow society you don't allow your family you don't allow anyone in your circle of influence to rush you into doing something that God said it's not time yet. When you believe in God's timetable, when you trust him more than you trust yourself, more than you trust people, you don't let folks rush you into anything. What do you mean, Pastor Maltbier? There are some young ladies that are watching me right now that's about to make a bad decision because the people in your circle and the people in your family, they're constantly trying to rush God's timetable and they keep pressuring you. When are you going to get married? When are you going to have kids? Don't rush God's timetable. To the gentlemen out there that feel peer pressure of achieving certain goals and hopes in life, don't let family and friends rush you into pursuing a dream pre prematurely. You've got to trust God's timetable. When you trust God's timetable, you no longer feel the need to make excuses or to always explain or try to justify why God hadn't done something yet in your life. When you trust God's timetable, you're not trying to please people. You're trying to focus on God. I love the way the psalmist said it in Psalms 55 and 8. He says, your thoughts are not God's thoughts, neither your ways, God's ways. Please understand God has a very specific blueprint and timetable for your life that other people might not understand, but with a bulldog type tenacity and a sweet confidence in the Lord, you stand up and trust that God knows what he's doing. He knows what he's doing, doing delays. He knows what he's doing, doing detours. He knows what he's doing, even in times of disappointment. You've got to understand if God blocked it, if God stopped it, if God delayed it, it was for my good. He's given me time perhaps to mature. He's protecting me from something I couldn't see. But if God delayed it, it was for my good. Living your best life is knowing God's timing. 
Living your best life is knowing your self-worth. But then finally, living your best life is about walking in your destiny. Walking in your destiny. I've been asked over and over again throughout the years, what is destiny, Pastor Mobia? How do we define it? It's such a churchy term. Here's my basic definition for destiny. In one word, destiny means destination. Think about it like going on a road trip. Your destiny is your destination. It's your goal. It's your target. It's your objective. It's where you're trying to go in life. It's your end goal. And you've got to understand that your destiny in life or your destination in life, where you're going to end up, is based upon your daily decisions. Here's what I know for sure. You're going to come up against two types of circumstances in your life. And don't you ever forget it. You're going to come up against some circumstances that you can change and control but you're also going to come up against some circumstances that you cannot change or control. And it's how you handle the things you can control and the things you can't control that ultimately take you to your destiny. So let me say it this way. There's some things out there that you can control. These are actions. There are some things out there that you cannot control. These are reactions or better stated attitudes. So where your actions and attitudes intersect is the place of your destiny. So when I talk about walking in your destiny, I'm talking about considering how you manage the things in your life that you can control. When I talk about destiny, I'm talking about how you manage, how's your attitude with the things you cannot control. I personally believe this is what Paul was talking about in Galatians 6 and 7. In Galatians 6 and 7, he says, don't be deceived. God is not mocked. A man reaps what he sows. In other words, for every decision you make, every action and every attitude, there is a corresponding consequence, whether good or bad, we call it destiny. Today's Wednesday word is living your best life. It's about stepping outside of your comfort zone and becoming all you can be in God. Remember those words of Jesus. The devil comes to steal, kill, and destroy. But Jesus has come that you might have life, a life that you can live to the full. Be blessed.